So Steve, um, first of all, can I congratulate you for the best use of nasal whistling ever seen on big screen? Yeah. Oh good, I'm glad that worked. Yeah. It really did, after all the hours and work. And <laughs> here I am, some schmuck talking to you about nasal whistling. No, that's <laughs> important, it's important, it's got to work. You know, I hope we, have to, we sort of think, I think this might be funny. You know? but, uh, in all seriousness, Alan Partridge, part of your life for over 20 years, mm. uh, recently you described him as a blessing and a curse. Did it did you take much persuading to step back into the character in such a big way? Um, not really, because it was my because I suggested it. So, uh, <laughs> so it, I was the one saying to you know the the, the, the Armando and Pete Bainham who who'd originally worked on the first series, let's do let's do a film. Uh, but of course, uh, you know I had to persuade in the same in the same way as uh, suggesting it. Uh, I knew it was sort of uh, risky. Um, but we, I I still used to think about things the character might do that I thought might be funny. Uh, even after we'd finished the last TV series in 2001, so it was about a seven-year break, and then I started doing a live tour where I brought the character back and, and uh, started to do these web, uh, these, these uh, mid-morning matters on, on these webisodes. And uh, with the, when the guys came along, the Rob and Neil Gibbons, these new writers, that that was that had that that gave it the momentum it needed to sort of sustain itself on film, and there was this, that's fr brought the fresh blood that was needed. I'm guessing the biggest challenge and, and the, the risk and the worry is that he's not a cin cinematic character. His humour is rooted in being a Middle Englander. I yes. Mean, yeah. Did you have to rein yourself in and think, you know, we don't want to do a Sex in the City two here and take him off to Dubai and be in a super or anything? Yeah. Yeah. His, no. his humour is rooted in England, isn't it? Yes, it is, it is, and uh, we didn't want to do that, so we kept him in Norfolk and Norwich. Uh, I kept kept him in his locale, and made more of, actually, made more of Norwich as a location, which we didn't really do in the TV series, So we, but we decided to keep him there and make something extraordinary happen that was not outlandishly big. Um, and, you know, we, we looked at films like uh, Dog Day Afternoon and Ace in the Hole, um, these films that were about these little events that get a little bit of media attention. But for the people involved, it's quite big. Um, and uh, so, yes, we tried to, you know, to make it, we thought that would make it dynamic, but retain the smallness. And the character, I thought, we, did, we definitely thought could sustain 90 minutes because we'd spent so long developing him, he seemed so interesting and fully formed that we thought it would, it would sustain itself. And, yeah. and people would stay with the character because there's so much affection for him. I mean, it's big enough siege... Uh, to send Jane Secker from Sky News out there, but not Kate. <laughs> is, is that basically the level you're aiming at? It's, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it, exactly. It's, it's a sort of medium-sized uh, news event. On, on, a, on, a, on a poor news week, it would certainly you know make national news probably. You bring the character out. You give him a car chase. It's it, the only slower car chase I've ever seen is Father Ted's uh, infamous right. milk float <laughs> speed episode. I mean, was yeah. it important that didn't go crazy with lots of spins and all that kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, of course, we didn't want to do that thing of... Because well, all you can do is look like a low-rent American action movie because we're never going to be able to do it as well as them. You know, um, you know, we can't compete with Pacific Rim on its special effects, but then I dare say Pacific Rim isn't as funny as Alan Partridge. Well, where next for the character then? Because... Is his natural home the big screen? I mean, I know you're doing another series of Mid-Morning Matters, but, I mean, what, where, where do you take him from here? Uh, I don't know, is the answer. But I think there's all, there is somewhere for him to go because he's, because he's been developed so much over the years. You can sort of... He has a sort of life of his own. And, you know, when we did the... the when the, the Gibbons, uh, Rob and Neil, did the biography, um, it, it had a natural shape to it. And it's sort of... There, there's... Um, he sort of uh, he sort of lives and breathes in his own alternative universe now. So I can imagine we sort of dip in and see what he's doing, or just push him in this direction or that direction. He sort of uh, you know he can sort of do anything as long as we don't keep as long as we, do, we keep it sort of fairly real. And the biography is one of the most frustrating books I've ever read because it is brilliant, but you end up reading it as Alan Partridge. Yeah, yeah. It can drive you nuts. <laughs> I mean, I don't need to tell you this. I mean, yeah, I know because it's his tone of voice throughout. So it's um, yeah, and I and I spent three days recording it. But uh, the thing is, you know, uh, despite the, the fact that in some ways, you know, you, I'm, I'm I'm sort of saddled with this character. When I read it out loud, it does make me laugh. And when I was doing that, recording that in a sort of a, a very obscure studio in the middle of Manhattan is where I recorded it because I was doing a job out there. And there were these two engineers who didn't even know who the character was, and they were puzzled because I kept bursting out laughing at myself, you know, um, and going back and having to do retakes. But um, so it's it's still, it's still enjoyable. Lovely, Steve. Thank you.
Thank you.